so uh, we're in character creation. I can select uh, my background. Uh, so these are all the Dungeons and Dragons backgrounds that you know. If you play Dungeons and Dragons, I can change my body type. I can change my race, so I can play as a tiefling. I can play as a drow. I can play as a human. I can play as a git Yankee. I can play as a dwarf. I can play as an elf. I can play as a half elf. I can play as a half drow. I can play as a halfling. <laughs> And uh, there's more, but we're only showing a few. Uh, these are the races that will be going into early access, and there are more will be added afterwards. And so depending on which race I pick, I get different features. Uh, I can also Abilities. select which class I'm going to play. We have six classes that will Magic. be available on early access from the get-go, and then we'll just add more as we, pro we progress. Um, you uh, so I can play as a wizard, cleric, uh, fighter, uh, ranger, rogue, and Warlock, and then I can pick uh, the abilities, uh, ability points that go with that and select my skills in which I'm going to be proficient. Today we're going to play an origin story. So we have different origin stories. Uh, there's going to be five that are going to be in early access. There will be more after. Uh, so this is Lysel. She's the girl you saw in the intro. So she's a Git Yankee. Uh, Gael is a wizard. Uh, he has a very big problem, and that's pretty much that he's going to explode. Um, Shadowheart, she's a uh, dark cleric. Uh, so she's got quite a story too. Will is a monster hunter who made a pact with the devil. He regrets it. Um, and today we're going to play as Astarian, who is a vampire spawn. Uh, he's a noble. Uh, so vampire spawn is not really a vampire. He has a vampire, a vampire to which he is a slave. Uh, he's a high elf, which means that we get to select a cantrip for him. So we're going to pick Mage Hand because we're going to do cool things with it. And all the rest is already preset for him, so we just have to click the Venture Forth button and we can continue our adventure. Blasted doors, I... What? Oh, it's you. I saw you on the ship. You survived, then. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger. Confusion. Resolve. Ah! You. You've got the same thing I do. In your head. I felt it. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of dialogue options. Uh, so what just happened to us is because of the tadpole. I was already introduced to that in the tutorial. We call it mind melding. Uh, so we both have a tadpole in our heads and uh, we can telepathically uh, connect to each other. Uh, but I'm also very hungry. So I'm playing this from the point of view of Astarin, vampire spawn. Uh, so you will see that all of my choices will be tailored to uh, being Astarin, essentially. So I'm going to stare at her and realize that I'm very hungry. What's the matter with you? Has that tadpole scrambled your brain already? So I can basically say, okay, well, I'll just uh, feed, uh, or uh, I can swallow my urge and find ignorance, which is what I'm going to do because I uh, need a companion. Come on. The chase through hell, the creatures, what they did to us, the tadpole, that thing is going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind these doors. But I've barely made a dent in them so far. This might be the shock. We went through a traumatizing experience, if an instructive one. I asked if by trauma he referred to the thing they put in my eye. Yes. The ocular penetration by an elithid tab pole, which will end with our souls being snuffed like strands of weave caught in dead magic. Not to mention, you're staring at me like a rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? Um, I can obviously just decide to feed. Um, but um, I will tell him that I don't take kindly to insults. Thin-skinned and a dodger of questions. Usually means the answer's no. Guess that'll have to wait. Primary need now is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Uh, not only did I recall it, I said I was already enjoying its effects, referring to the fact that I can walk in the sunlight. Interesting. Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it'll turn us into mind flayers? A process known as seromorphosis? It is to be avoided. I assume you're no accomplished healer either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Okay, was this a conversation or an interrogation? Just trying to figure out where we stand. Conclusion? Nowhere. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help, and I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. 
How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? Yes, I need a, a wizard. A wizard is going to be very Most good. Most excellent. Then, without further ado, let's be off. Besides, looks like you keep some interesting company. A woman with shadows for eyes, deep as the dark lake. Pleasure, madam. Is it indeed? We'll see. Oh, we're doing pretty good, actually. All right. Ah! Ooh. Ah! Ooh. So, combat is fairly high stakes, as you can see. Um, so they have a reaction, so that basically means if she walks away from here, they're going to hit her, which is not good. Um, so what I'm going to do, and he and he can't walk. Yeah. Uh, so I have a jump. I didn't want to use it yet, uh, but first I'm going to, oh man, uh, that's, jump as a bonus action in DG3. So that means that I can't use another bonus action, but it acts as a disengage also, and it's enhanced by my death ball that I have in, inside of me. Uh, I do have one action that I can still do, so I'm just going to try it out. This is my mage hand. My mage hand is bad at many things, but it's very good at throwing stuff. Uh, so I'm going to just slap it. There you go. Uh, that's... I wanted to show this to you today, but you have no idea how nervous I was about doing it because I was going to get in this situation. So I obviously should have approached them in a completely different manner. We'll see in the next combat how you can actually be much more strategic on it. Okay. This is much better. I feel much more relaxed about this fight. Um, I'm going to pin him down. So he can't get too close. There you go. This is how it's supposed to be. And then... I did actually have a very strong attack, but I never got to use it, which is Guiding Ball. Uh, and, but I'm going to use it now. Where's the other guy? Oh, he's still there. No, I'm going to wait. I'm just going to do this one. Yeah, it's very successful also. Uh, but I'm going to just put her in front of it. Put on my shield. And all right. he can't move anymore. So that's good. The other guy is very enthusiastically coming towards us. Uh, she's going to use her Guiding Bolt, which in general tends to kill them in one shot. There you go, 15 of damage. And then uh, we're going to shoot. You fight well. <laughs> that you can do. So you can, for instance, make a stair. Why would you make a stair? Well, because you want to walk on it, of course. Let me do that. Oh, shit. <laughs> Badass normally, so it's uh, usually a star in the dice. Uh, so, this is an example of a passive check. So, my nature skill was used to discover uh, something, and so uh, if it would have failed, I wouldn't have found it, of course. So, I found a little cache. The cache belongs to uh, the harpers, uh, so it gives me a little secret. But it's especially this thing that I need. This is a potion of speed, uh, it will uh, double my, mo uh, my movement points. And it's going to also allow me... Stop! Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. Okay, so we have a bunch of persuasion options. Uh, I can tell them that I was just looking around. Tell them that the ship was full of monsters. Uh, my many comrades were coming. Um, or I can try to in intimidate them. I'm going to tell them there's plenty of monsters. And then that's going to be a roll. It's going to be a fail, failed roll, which is fine. I mean, it's uh, You're all it's hot okay. air. Think you can get us to leave that bounty to you? Not a chance. So... Uh, luckily for me, I planned for this. And so if you do a shot out of a sneak position, that is a 100% chance. And so... Pitch barrel here for me. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, inside, you find a cool 
weapon uh, and a key and a skull. So we're gonna take everything. And then you have grease appearing everywhere. And then you got fire appearing. And so, but I knew exactly where to stand. <laughs> and I'm gonna enter turn based mode because turn based mode is also something that you can use to navigate traps. So you got six seconds to think, and then the traps are get their turn, and you get your turn. So you get the, the gist. So the way that I figured out I'm getting out of here is Mage Hand. Mage Hand can throw stuff. And so what I can do, you saw that I can make my own stairs. So I can make a stair out of here. Mage Hand is good. Okay. I'm gonna do my little jump now. Maybe there's not enough space. Maybe there's not enough space. There is enough space. Apparently not. Oh yeah, I wonder if that's a bug that I have. No, oh, there you go. Okay, so that should work. There we go. Ah, this builder blocks me. So I'm gonna send the mate. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, why do you have to follow mage hands? again. Yeah, that should do it. Don't fall. Don't fall. Okay, we made it outside of the very evil trap. <laughs> Phone is charging, I forgot my timer, so. <laughs> Alright, well let me, I, I wanted to show you one last thing, so a little bit of audience participation. Um, so let me try to do that as fast as I can. He gave up. <laughs> he was like, I'm done. No, I don't think I'm going to get out of it. 